Hello gamers, this is Sai, and welcome back to Which Way Games. What's blue, and the fastest thing alive. That's right, it's Sonic the Hedgehog. And with that being said, let's get on with the video. With Valentine's Day now upon the world, some out there are going crazy, proclaiming love for the nearest and dearest, pulling out all the stops to impress the ones they love, but for others love goes far beyond receiving a gift or a gesture of love. This could be the first time discovering something that then went to have a huge impact on life, and with the world of gaming, this couldn't be more true. When gamers were young, they were first introduced to many different games. And with these games, the usual mascot will be associated with its franchise. And two mascots have stood the test of time are Nintendo's Italian plumber called Mario and Sega's famous blue blur known as Sonic the Hedgehog. For me, Sonic has been a big part of my life ever since I saw the first game on the Sega Mega Drive. And since his debut in 1991, he has captured the hearts of millions of gamers across the world and still remains one of the most recognisable mascots of all time. And with the new Sonic movie out at the time of this video, I thought I'd get some fans of the Blue Blur together to talk about their experiences when they first encountered Sonic and why the world loves this blue anthropomorphic hedgehog with attitude. Hey all, Charles here. Sonic the Hedgehog. You might love him, you might hate him. But I personally like the games that are good. And some of the Sonic games I feel are the best are the original games for the Sega Mega Drive. Now, Sonic made his way into the gaming scene all the way back in 1991, when Sonic the Hedgehog was released for the Sega Mega Drive. He was Sega's answer to rival Nintendo's Mario and taking the mantle of mascot away from Alex the Kid. Sonic the Hedgehog went on to become one of the classics of gaming history. And from this, Sonic would enter the world of comics and cartoons, but more on that later. Following on from the success of Sonic the Hedgehog, the infamous Sonic 2 was released, which improved on the original and eventually the world couldn't get enough of Sonic, especially when the legendary Sonic 3 as well as Sonic and Knuckles was released. Each of these games got bigger and better, but these weren't the only games that first introduced gamers to Sonic. Other Sonic games appeared on the Master System and the Game Gear, all doing their best to emulate the magic of the 16-bit counterparts. But there were other games that tried something different and introduced a whole new wave of gamers to the franchise. Speaking of this, let Justin, otherwise known as the Gameaholic, explain more. I was introduced to Sonic the Hedgehog in 1993. I was about four years old. It was Christmas, 1993. My parents had bought us a Sega Genesis console. And with it came Sonic Spinball. A uh, very underrated game that uh, people speak of. Uh, I enjoyed it very much. Very short game, about four or five levels long. But uh, that's actually how I was introduced to Sonic the Hedgehog. And then after that, uh, I purchased, which I would say is one of my favorite games, the next year, which was Sonic and Knuckles, which I have right here, was actually released on my birthday in 1994. Uh, very excellent game very uh very utilized with the fact that you could play as sonic and knuckles in the game basically different setups for both uh characters uh same concept getting the chaos emeralds and basically you know zipping past the levels and everything plus with it being a great game gamers could combine it with sonic 3 for the ultimate Sonic experience. But there were some gamers out there that had their first introduction to Sonic, but not on the original consoles from Sega. I already said this in my Windows 7 retrospective video, but let me elaborate. The first time I played Sonic the Hedgehog was on a Flash site. I believe this is the one, SS Sega, but it could be a similar site that it doesn't exist anymore. I really can't remember. I was terrible at the game at first, but I was able to get past Green Hill Zone after a few attempts. But I was never able to pass Marble Zone, and I was frustrated, but I really didn't care that much. 
because my mom actually bought me a copy of Sonic's Ultimate Sega Genesis Collection for the Xbox 360, so I was able to experience Sonic and Knuckles, Sonic 1, 2, and 3, and it was an amazing experience. But the order that these games are in made me believe that Sonic and Knuckles was actually the first in a franchise. Now that I think about that, I feel really stupid. I had a lot of fun with those games, but I had the same problem on all of them. I couldn't get past the second zone. I wasn't able to pass Act 2 of Chemical Plant, you know, that rising water section. Nice remember this part, and combining with the drowning music really put gamers on edge. If I knew that shortcut was there, I probably would have beat the game. Sonic 3, I couldn't get past Hydrocity Zone, and Sonic and Knuckles, I wasn't able to get past Mushroom Hill. So yeah, you could say six-year-old me is pretty bad at games in general. I mean, at least I was good at Rabbids Go Home for the Wii. Did anyone else play that, or is it just me? And as for the future of Sonic, I would like to see there be a Sonic Mania 2, or a Sonic Mania dedicated to the 8-bit Sonic games. That would be my cup of tea. Now, I'd love to see that, especially for the Sonic games on the Sega Master System. But eventually, Sonic would enter the world of comics. In America, they had the Archie comics, but here in the UK, we had Sonic the Comic. Sonic the Comic would follow the events of the games loosely, while creating unique storylines that eventually would become part of the Sonic mythos. The comic would be released each week for fans of Sonic to enjoy, and join him on an adventure to save the planet of Mobius, while introducing new characters, as well as giving an insight into the world of Sonic. Despite the comic being named after the fastest thing alive, the comic even had other gaming series become part of the comic, such as Shinobi and Streets of Rage. But for most readers that were interested in the stories about Sonic, especially when Sonic 3 and Sonic and & Knuckles appeared on the gaming scene. In fact, I do remember getting Sonic & Knuckles the bumper issue from my mum when it was my birthday and I had a day off school. In this bumper issue, the character of Knuckles was introduced, as well as the mysterious floating island he calls home. There was a backstory that explained what happened to Dr. Robotnik after the events of Sonic 2 and his chance encounter with Knuckles, before falling the echidna into believing Sonic was a threat to the Master Emerald. Obviously, Knuckles is now Sonic's ally, but for some gamers out there, Knuckles is the best choice. Some fans of Sonic were introduced to the world's fastest hedgehog by other media outside the world of gaming, such as Matt is about to explain. Howdy, I'm Matt from the McGuinness Experiment, some guy you most likely have never heard of, and for that reason, I'm not going to take up too much of your time. I've been aware of Sonic ever since I first saw Sonic Underground, back when I was about five, I believe, and ever since then, I've loved the characters of Sonic and Robotnik, not so much the rest of the cast from that show, though, and in hindsight, that's probably a good thing. Yeah, I agree. However, these two other cartoons are fantastic to watch. It would be another wee while before I played the classics on Sonic Mega Collection Plus for PC and truly learned to love the franchise. There was something about the music, the visuals, the momentum-based gameplay and all the other aspects of the game that just felt magical and special to me in ways which nothing else had at the time. These are some of the reasons why Sonic is loved all over the world and I cherish the series for making me, uh, well, gamer. I would call myself the quiet cynic of the fandom, and my tendency to nitpick has led me to review the games and open my channel's doors to many people. Well, that and the fact that I do things with a puppet called Reggie, but that's a different story for another time. I really like the series, despite my opinions on a number of the games, and I honestly think that if it wasn't for the games I've experienced in the saga, I and others like me wouldn't be the people we are today. One little cartoony hedgehog helped shape a community of people like I and all the people you've been contributing to the video you're currently watching, as well as which way games himself, and I hope that Sonic can continue to influence generations after me. Oh dear. Please forgive me for that joke, that was horrible. Despite many ups and downs, Sonic has always come through. Let's hope that we can do the same. Over time, Sonic would have his ups and downs like Matt just said, and eventually would bounce back on rival systems. With one gamer, this would turn to the limelight, truly change their experience with gaming. I've been a big Sonic fan for quite a long time, and it all started in 2010 when I got a Nintendo DS with a handful of games such classics as New Super Mario Brothers and Super Mario 64 DS. However, one game stood out from all the rest, and this was Sonic Classics Collection. Playing Green Hill Zone for the first time, with its memorable music and vibrant colours, had me hooked, especially when Sonic got up to full speed. With this, I was mesmerised by the world of Sonic and his long battle against Dr. Robotnik. Since then, I've played the majority of Sonic games, including some of the bad and questionable ones. But for me, Sonic the Hedgehog 2 is my favourite game ever. Since then, I've been collecting Sonic merchandise, as well as reading many of the comics I've laid my hands on. I can't wait to see what the future has in store for Sonic, but for all the good and the bad, Sonic will always keep running. 
Of course, I've always loved Sonic the Hedgehog, and I really hope the new movie will springboard him back to the same popularity he had back in the 90s. Thank you, and good night. For me, the first time I encountered Sonic was at a friend's house. He was playing the original, and I was mesmerised by the fast gameplay and the fantastic music, which still gets my feet tapping to this day. But the question is, what's the best song in the franchise? With almost 30 years gone since Sonic made his debut back in 1991, Sonic really has charmed the world of multiple games, several comics, as well as cartoon shows. And not forgetting the 1999 Sonic the Hedgehog movie, which is still fun to watch. So many different types of games have come and gone, but most gamers find themselves coming back to the game that first introduced them to the world's fastest hedgehog. Now with the Sonic movie hitting the silver screen at the speed of sound, I'll be interested to see where the world's fastest hedgehog will head to next, and what will the future bring? Perhaps a whole new legacy of Sonic media to inspire future gamers as well as entice new fans. For the time being, Sonic will still be regarded as one of my favourite video game characters of all time. And like Sonic, let's continue running well into the future. So for now, let's continue playing some of the classic Sonic games that started it all. Anyway, come back next time where there's more than meets the eye with the everlasting war between the Autobots and the Decepticons, but can Optimus Prime stop Megatron? Thank you so much for watching, and see you next game.